Sidney Cam was confident he could re-engineer the Typhoon into a better, faster, and stronger fighter. So, as the Typhoon was being put through its paces, Sidney Cam developed a derivative initially called Typhoon II with this very goal in mind. The changes were many, so much so that the Typhoon II name was quickly dropped. It had a new, thinner wing built for laminar flow that improved its handling and top speed, a bubble canopy for excellent visibility that was later used on Typhoons, and guns that were further recessed into the wings to remove the protruding gun barrels and allow for cleaner aerodynamics. Being so radically different, Hawker would rename the aircraft to the Tempest, keeping with their tradition of naming aircraft after storms. They would build numerous prototypes to test a variety of engines, from the Bristol Centaurus to the Rolls-Royce Griffin and a newer version of the Napier Sabre. The Centaurus and Sabres would both be selected, partially because Napier was still having supply difficulties producing enough engines. So, Tempest with the Centaurus became the Mark II, while Tempest with the Sabres were designated the Mark V. Performance between the two aircraft was generally similar despite the different engines, though the Centaurus-powered Tempest would end up being a few miles per hour faster since it had wing-mounted radiators that helped aerodynamics instead of the draggy chin scoop of the Mark V. The first Tempest prototype would fly in 1942 and be introduced after a long development phase in 1944. The Tempest's first trial of combat would be over the Western Front in the skies over Europe during the Battle of the Bulge, where it served as armed reconnaissance helping to find targets for tactical bombers and occasionally dueling with the Luftwaffe. Combat experience would find the Tempest to be a very fine aircraft, with much more better handling compared to the Typhoon, and still having the signature top speed, now in excess. Tempest would soon come face to face with the new jets of the Luftwaffe, such as the ME262 Schwelbe and the HE162 Volksjäger, with the first jet kill of the Tempest being scored by a Mark V when it encountered and then shot down an HE162, incidentally leading to the first recorded case of a pilot ejecting from an aircraft during combat as the pilot of the HE162 ejected, though it sadly did not survive as he ejected too low for the parachute to open in time. Against normal piston aircraft like the later model G-series BF-109s or the D-series Falkwolf 190s, Tempest continued to be very effective. Despite the 109 technically having better maneuverability and the Falkwolf 190s having much heavier armament compared to the Tempest, the Tempest had so much raw power thanks to its engine that it could, in the hands of a skilled pilot, effectively dictate the fight. Coupled this with late war German pilots being much less experienced than years prior, and you have the explanation for how despite less than two years of service in World War II, the Tempest scored over 250 kills for only about 30 losses, establishing a very respectable 8 to 1 kill loss ratio. After World War II, Tempest would be exported to both India and Pakistan, as well as replacing the older typhoons of New Zealand and the RAF. The RAF actually loved the Tempest so much that they made it their standard fighter, over the Spitfire, and would keep it until the development of the then-in-progress Gloucester Meteor and de Havilland Vampire were more mature. Tempest would never fire their guns in anger in Korea, though would see brief combat during the early parts of the Malaysian Emergency, during which pro-communist Malaysian forces attempted to separate themselves from Britain to form an independent state. Of the nearly 2,000 Tempests built, only 12 surviving examples exist today, all of which are either on display, under restoration, or in storage. Despite entering the war towards its end, the Tempest served admirably, and shined as an example of what Sidney Cam had wanted all along when he first drew up the Typhoon. However, this is ironically not the end of the Tempest's legacy, as another derivative of the aircraft would be developed and adopted by the fleet air arm of the Royal Navy. Initially built off of a modified Tempest Mark II that was called the Fury, the Sea Fury is the penultimate version of the Tempest that introduced a much more powerful Centaurus engine with much more modern knowledge of aerodynamics, and rugged construction suitable for carrier operations. This version would last for much longer than the Tempest, remaining in service until the late 60s and continuing to live on through the air racing world, where they became very famous for their insane top speeds and striking recognizable silhouettes. We shall, however, cover the Sea Fury in more depth when we go over the Royal Navy, but for now, that is the end of this episode on the Hawker Tempest. As previously stated, this is uploaded alongside the episode on the preceding Hawker Typhoon, so if you haven't watched that yet, I would highly encourage you to do so. A poll will be posted afterwards to vote on the next aircraft to be covered. The rules are the same as before, with the top two being scheduled to be covered, the third being kept for the next poll, and the next poll being after the two episodes.
But for now, that is all for me. Have a good day, and thank you for watching.